Hey everyone, thank you again for watching this video. Um, so in the last video, we had a, a interview session with Praveen and uh, we tried covering as much as possible, uh, but with the virtual machine um, and uh, virtual machine operations and troubleshooting uh, steps for connectivity and uh, performance and his roles and responsibilities, it took a lot of time. So that's why we thought of creating another video uh, where he can explain, uh, you know, a few other topics that he has experienced. All right. So Praveen, uh, welcome back, Praveen. And uh, since we already have an introduction session, I'm not going to take mm -hmm. the introduction. So let's focus on other areas now, right? So um, okay. with respect to VM, I think we are pretty much fine. Uh, I'm going to start with the backup solutions, okay? So Praveen, can you tell me, did you mm -hmm. work on uh, any backup solution on the cloud? Yeah, Kamal, yeah, we are using uh, our cloud uh, Azure native backup solution like the recovery service vault and uh, site recoveries. Okay, is uh, site recovery is a backup solution? Uh, it's not for uh, individual VM backup, it's for the application backup kind of thing. The entire, uh, entire uh, region or the entire application setup will be backed up, means it's stored in a secondary region in case of the primary goes down. Okay, what is the difference between backup and site recovery? Can you just tell me? Backup is like for uh, for individual machines. So whatever machines, uh, Azure machines we have in the cloud. So we used to, we, we, we need to uh, ba enable backup for each machines uh, one by one in the Azure recovery vault. So if you talk about to ASR, ASR is for uh, high availability of applications. Uh, when the primary, entire primary region goes down, so the entire setup will be replicated in the secondary region from where it will from where it will start responding to the end users. That is uh, the purpose of uh, ASR. Okay. So is the replication starts when you decide to do the failover or you have to start the replication first, then later you do a failover when region outage happen? Uh, the replication used to have uh, used to happen on a uh, frequent interval uh, as per the uh, rule as per the setup how we are setting up. So the failover will happen uh, when the primary goes down. It will happen. We can automate that or we can do the manual manual failover. Okay. Okay. So when it comes when it comes to the backup, right? So what kind mm -hmm. of workloads you can backup with the Azure Native Backup Solution? Okay, so uh, you can take the backup of Azure VMs, uh, storage, uh, in, in, if you talk about storage, you can backup like uh, file share in the storage and you can backup a SQL database. And if you talk about the on-primary system, you can take up take backup of uh, files and folders and the uh, system state or even the entire uh, uh, entire system, entire bare metal system of uh, servers. Okay, so what is the difference between the uh, snapshot and uh, Azure Backup? Snapshot is a manual process of taking the taking the current state of your disk, uh, and from the snapshot you cannot create a you cannot restore a VM. So maybe you need to create a disk from the snapshot. From there you can create a new VM. Uh, it is not, uh, so you cannot restore a VM from snapshot, basically. So you can create another VM from the uh, snapshot. So that's what my point. So if you talk about backup, it is like, uh, it is like automated uh, through our uh, backup system. Uh, you can schedule a backup. So daily, once uh, daily, multiple, uh, multiple times in a day, you can do that. And you can you can restore the backup points for monthly or weekly or even for yearly. You can have the backups points there from where you can restore to the current current system. For if if you talk about snapshot, it is a manual process. Whenever you want to have one, you you need to trigger it manually. But backup Azure backup is like automated. Is it, is it will happen as per the schedule. Okay, so um, so what is an application consistency recovery point in the backup? 
application consistency backup uh, is a backup for, uh, before the backup happens it will uh, write the uh, it will it will write the whatever the content in the uh, in the memory it will write back to the disk after that it will take the backup so you will have the clear copy of uh, everything whatever is currently the system and the server has it so it will take that uh, backup after writing back to the disk if you talk about crash consistency it will take the just take the entire disk of the current server so it it will not consider the content of the uh, uh, memory or ram what is available in that that's the different recommend okay that's good um so did you ever perform the re restore of your virtual machines if yes, yes what is yes. A, what solution you have used and uh, what situations you you go through you go for a restore uh, restore so consider if you are uh, implementing something in the application whatever is running already so uh, when you when you when you deploy something and in the system getting crashed or the application getting crashed so the application team wanted to uh, roll back to the existing setup so we used to go for a, a backup in in those scenarios and uh, if if they if the config or something has changed, so if they want to uh, roll back to the old setup, we can go for the restore of uh, files and folders from the server. Uh, in those scenarios also, we can go for a backup, uh, sorry, uh, restore. Okay, so that, that's that's a scenario, right? So when, what kind mm -hmm. of restore options you have? Let's say um, your application is crashed. Okay, and they okay. asked you to restore it. So, what restore options you have? We have option for uh, restoring, replacing the existing server, and we have options to recreate another VM from the existing uh, existing backup. And also, if you want to have the backup of the disk, you can go for the disk also. Okay, um, that's fine. So. Did you ever configure the backup for SQL databases? Yeah, Kamal, I have done that. Yeah, we can take. Okay. So what is the discovery process? What happens when the databases discovery started? Uh, first, you need to discover the uh, SQL server where the database resides. So for, once you uh, discovered the uh, SQL server, you need to discover again for the databases. It will, it may take like 10 to 15 minutes. So once the uh, recovery is done, you will, it will show all the databases there. So you can select whatever you want to backup. Then you can, you can enable backup from there. Okay. So what is the full backup uh, difference between the full backup and differential backup? Full back is full backup is like the complete uh, disk uh, data. And the differential backup is like the difference between the last backup and the the data modified after that. So the size of the uh, backup will be less when you go for the differential backup. So does Azure VM takes a daily full backup or incremental so, backup or differential backup? When you enable the backup, it will uh, the first time it will go for the full backup. From uh, the next time on, it will it will go for incremental backup. Okay, what is the instant recovery point in the Azure backup? The instant recovery point is the uh, system state uh, when it take the backup and uh, uh, once the backup is completed, the data will be transferred to the vault. Um, I'm just struck here, Kamal. I'm, I'm, I don't have... Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Now, Sini, the, the whole point, right? When, when I usually interview for any candidates, um, I don't go in depth of it, right? Uh, okay. I'll see if, you know, the candidate is, uh, knows the backup solutions. Uh, he, does he know how to perform the backup, how to perform the restore, and how to troubleshoot if there is a problem, right? So mm -hmm. that's that, that's where, because we will not get uh, time to cover everything, entire Azure's component, right? Uh, yeah. Within 30 minutes or 45 minutes time that the candidate gives us, right? And if you keep on asking the questions and a uh, candidate might uh, be like, <clears throat> he won't be confident. He might be disappointed. Maybe we may not be able to identify his talent. So we'll try to mm -hmm. understand overall, like, you know, whether he's a, uh, 
capable of doing things or not, whether he's aware of it or not, or not right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so I know that you are capable of, uh, you know, doing, implementing the backup solution. That's what I sensed it, okay? okay. So one last question I have with respect to the backup. So do you, do you, do you, you mentioned we can backup the on-premises files and folder as well, right? Okay. Um, so do you know what is passphrase uh, in the on-premises files and folders backup? Yeah, well, once you uh, enable backup for the on-premise system, you need to, uh, first you need to register the uh, server with the Azure portal with some uh, Azure uh, recovery wall key as well as the passphrase. So which will help you when you want to restore the backup, uh, restore the server or folder from the backup, you need to provide the uh, passphrase. Okay, do you know the importance of the passphrase? Yeah, that's what, when we want to recover the data from the Azure portal. You, what you happens need, if you lose the passphrase? If you lose it, it's, there is no chance to recover the data from Okay. Azure. So another question is with respect to the backup solution, right? How do you monitor your backup jobs? So do you monitor them manually by going to each and every recovery search vault? Or do you have any monitoring solution in place? We have a monitoring system. Uh, we can uh, integrate all our backups into the log uh, log analytical workspace. From there, you can create a dashboard and you can monitor uh, if any failure or something. And also, you can you can uh, trigger emails whenever there is a failure happens. Uh, that also you can do. It. Okay, um, that's great. Thank you, Praveen. Um, so just to summarize, right? So we are talking about the Azure backup, but you mentioned about site recovery as well. So that is good. So Azure backup and site recovery, both are the business continuity and disaster recovery solutions. Azure backup is used for business continuity and um, uh, ASR is for disaster recovery solutions. So if I talk about disaster recovery, uh, you have set up virtual machines and uh, virtual machines have the applications running. You know, if you think they are critical applications, in case if there is an issue with the Azure uh, region, uh, any regional outages, what you can do is you can fail over these missions to another region. So the missions will be created in the another region and they can be accessible from the different region, right? That is the reason we use Azure Site Recovery. So what we have to do is for any mission, we have to enable the replication. It's a continuous replication process. It's not a, a set of intervals. It's a continuous replication, but you can specify how, how frequently you want to create application consistency recovery point in the target with the help of replication policy okay that's about the asr or azure site recovery when it comes to the azure backups yes azure backup is um, used to uh, recover the data in case if there's any data loss or you know application is being corrupted right if somebody comes to you and say hey i want to uh, i'm just checking you know, if there's a backup that i can recover uh, from the backup solution, then yes, uh, you can go ahead and check the backups available or not. You know, if they're available, then you, are, you will go ahead and recover it. So in the event of application um, crash, let's say application is installed on the OS disk, right? It may not be necessarily in the data disks, right? So you can, in that situations, you can just go with the disk uh, restore and just wrap the OS disk. So that should take care of, uh, you know, these problems. You don't need to replace the entire disk uh, entire server or you know you don't need to create a new server out of it just re re restore the disk and just re re swap the only waste disk that should be taken care of. okay so that's about the azure backup solution and with respect to the passphrase for the on-premises files and folders it's very important because if you lose this passphrase you cannot recover the data even microsoft cannot help uh, in recovering the data okay so that's good uh, with respect to backup we are fine um, so uh, let's move on to the storage. Okay. So did okay. you work on Azure storage account? Yeah, come on. Yeah, I use create uh, storage for our users based on the request. Yeah. So what in a, what is an Azure storage account and how it is going to useful in the day-to-day -day business? Oh, uh, Azure storage is a uh, storage solution provided by Azure where you can have, uh, which, is, which can be uh, accessed through your uh, uh, storage explorer in your from your uh, local machine as well as from the portal you can upload and uh, keep your backup data or application data whatever it may be so if you, you see like in four types of data in uh, normal st uh, blob storage like it's a blob or file share or queue or table 
so depends on the data what you have you need to use any one of these kind of uh, uh, storage access storage services from uh, Azure command. So basically, it's for uh, having a large backup uh, data kind of thing. But usually, for our application, we used to have our uh, server storage, not the, the storage service, because the no latency might be there, and we use the storage. Okay. So what is the what is the blob storage service? Blob storage can contain any data. It may be a uh, uh, like uh, text file, video, or image, whatever it may be, you can store any kind of data in blob storage. So what does the file storage service? File storage service is like, even, even in a file store, you can save any kind of data, uh, but uh, this will allow you to map into any, into your system or into your server, uh, which, which can be used like a drive in your local system which will, will give you the flexibility of having that. Okay, so now you mentioned um, Azure Storage is storage solution offered by Microsoft, and you have uh, different storage services, blobs, files, tables, and queues. Now, mm -hmm. when it comes to the blob storage uh, and file storage, you upload the data, right? Okay. So how do you upload the data? What tools you have it, okay? And uh, how do you ensure that data is secured? when you are uploading the data okay. okay so we have tools like uh, storage explorer where which you can install in your uh, server or in your local machine from there you can upload or uh, download data uh, to the storage and also we have a command called ac copy uh, which also which also allow us allow us to uh, copy or uh, download files from your storage as well as uh, from your server to the storage server storage system and in case of the protection, uh, like you can, if you go to the storage, uh, networking section of the storage, uh, storage service, you see uh, you can restrict them uh, to be allowed from only from a particular subnet from where you want to allow access. Or you can create a private endpoint uh, from where only, for only from where you can allow, we can access the storage. So which is like, uh, when you try to access the storage, which will uh, uh, allow the traffic through uh, Microsoft Backbone, so it will be fast and secure. So, so this is the way you can uh, stick to your storage uh, service. Kamal. Okay, so basically, when you try to upload the data over the internet, so you can uh, enable an option in the Azure Storage account, uh, encrypt the data over the internet. So that's the first thing that you have to select if you mm -hmm. want to encrypt the data while uploading to the Azure storage account. And once you upload the data into the storage account, by default, it is encrypted. We call it as encryption at rest, okay? And um, if you also want to encrypt the, you know, storage medium where your data is stored, that is also available. So we call it as infrastructure encryption at the back end. So the, that's like a double encryption that you can do it. So this is with respect to the data encryption and how your data is secured, okay? and uh, later how your data is going to be accessible right so like you mentioned uh, under the networking section of storage account you can um, uh, deny the public access or internet access or you can allow the access from a specific virtual networks or you can access the data from the public so you have many options but usually right in mm -hmm. most of the enterprise environment we disable the internet access Okay, and um, we only allow the communication from the through your private endpoints. Uh, you can integrate the private endpoints to one of the virtual network, and that virtual network might have a VNet pairing with the you know your uh, jump host, right? Where your users can log into the jump host or you know remote servers, and from there they can connect to the storage account to perform the operation, or they can upload the data, they can modify the data through Storage Explorer or Easy Copy, right? In case if there's an application, the application only can be accessible from the specific jump host or you know a specific set of servers where it has a connectivity to the private endpoint okay so yeah. that's how you secure the communication to your storage account it's so one with respect to the data encryption the other one is the data connectivity and the other layer is like you know who manages the storage account right 
So you control the access. Let somebody come and delete the storage account. Maybe somebody have come and uh, delete the blob storage service, some containers or files shares. It's a problem, right? You control the access through, um, you know, our bag. And um, there are other options like um, storage contributor and storage blob data reader. There are other options that Microsoft introduced. With that, again, you are going to control who can modify the data. Okay, that's another yeah. option. And uh, when you're uploading data to the storage account to Blob, uh, Storage Explorer or you know AZ Copy, you will be using um, authentication methods. The authentication methods could be through uh, Azure AD, where you are going to control through RBAC. Okay, but there is other options like authenticate with the SAS token or access keys. If you use access keys. Uh, the user or application get full access to the storage account. They can access everything like uh, files, tables, or queues, or blob storage services. But if you use a SaaS token, you know, the SaaS token can have a specific service access, let's say only blob access, only read access to the blob, or, you know, table service access, and only allow access from a specific IP address, right? And only to a specific duration of time. Mm -hmm. So those are the controllers you have. And with those, um, uh, you know, SaaS as token configurations, you will be able to secure your uh, data into the just storage account, right? Only limited users or limited application can access with a limited duration. By default, this SaaS token can be given for 30 days to uh, 60 days. Probably can go for 45 days and up to 90 days. Every 90 days, it's recommended to renew the SaaS tokens and updating your applications, all right? So this is what we do in the storage account. Okay. okay, and what are the scenarios you implement? Uh, you, what are the different scenarios where you use storage account? We use storage account, um, as you said, to store the data. The data can be coming from, uh, you know, on premises or probably from a different server in the in the cloud environment, maybe from a different cloud environment as well, AWS or anywhere, right? So we transfer the large amount of data to the Azure storage account. Later, that data can be used by any application or any servers within the cloud environment. So how we transfer, we transfer if it is, a, let's say, uh, for one terabyte, or you know, two terabytes, maybe you can transfer through AZ Copy or you no know, storage explorer if you have enough bandwidth. If you don't have enough bandwidth, you might have to go for a Azure data box or data box heavy, there are different tools, right? So it's like offline transfer. So you get a disk to your data center, uh, you copy the data and you send it, uh, courier them, those disks to the Azure data center and Microsoft data center team will copy the data and keep it in your storage account. So there are different, you know, solutions, uh, the different use cases you have in the Azure storage account as well. Okay, so this is about the Azure storage account. Uh, one more question I have. So mm -hmm. can you explain me um, the replication methods on the storage account? Okay, so we have like uh, four kind, four different uh, methods of storing uh, the data, like uh, LRS, uh, ZRS, and GRS. Like LR is like local, uh, local storage, local local redundant storage, which will have a three copy of data in the same uh, data center, the same physical data center. If you go for ZRS, so it is like it is also having the three copy of data, but in a different region or different zone of the same region. So if you go for GRS, uh, it's like a six copy of data, a three in a primary region and a three copy in a, in a secondary region. So if the primary is east, if it is primary is in east US, the secondary will be like east US to uh, central US kind of thing. So this is for uh, your data security and high availability. And so also, that's, uh, okay, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, we have one more option called ZGRS, where uh, we have six copy of data, uh, like three uh, copies in the same region, but in different data centers, and another three copy in the secondary region, but in the same uh, data center. Yeah, we have four kind of uh, storage. Uh, can you access those six copies or three copies, whatever you mentioned? Yeah, we can, we can enable like read only. Uh, is it ZRS from if you enable that? Let's you say LRS. I'm taking example of LRS. LRS, no. Three Kamal. copies you mentioned. No, Kumal. It's for uh, Microsoft purpose. So if the data crashed, uh, if, the, if the storage is crashed from in uh, one one location, the Microsoft will uh, replace it with the copy from other location, other uh, copy. Okay. So I have a user who deleted a file. 
Okay, so uh, as soon as he deleted within five minutes, he reached out to us, you know, 10 minutes, he reached out to us and say, I deleted the data by mistakes. And since it is a LRS or GRS enabled, right? Can you help me with the data recovery from the GRS? So is it possible to record the data from GRS when somebody deleted the file on the storage account? No, Kamal, but there is an option called soft delete. Uh... No, that's fine. The soft yeah. delete is in any ways it is there, but so this is with res respect to the uh, durability data. data no, durability, right? We so cannot. Do why we cannot? Because Microsoft says six copies of data and you are paying for it, right? Yeah, but it's only for the in case of the uh, primary data what we are accessing is crashed. Microsoft can replace it with some other copy, but it, it, it will not be accessible to us directly. It's just for our data redundancy, not for uh, accessing from our side. Okay. 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 Um, that's fair enough. I think we are good with the storage account and uh, Azure backup solution. And you have many services in the Azure uh, cloud environment and Azure administrator is going to manage many of them. So in the interviews, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we, you may not get these many deep level of questions, okay? But they, there could be the interviewer, maybe can, you know, technical panel try to understand maybe uh, on the storage area, how good you are. Maybe in the network side, how good you are, right? So they might have to, they might stress on a specific area, right? So you should be good in everything. And I okay. remember you have done uh, a lot of exercises on the storage account and back side, right? You have done many things. You done, you did a lot of operations in the Azure Virtual Machine as well, but you are failing to explain, right? You know, if I ask you, okay, can you restore the VM for the backup? You will do it. And if I ask you, okay, can you restore from the, uh, can you configure backup for multiple VMs? You will do it. But mm -hmm. you need to project yourself, right? Whatever you've done, you have to explain. And that is the reason I'm trying to conduct these sessions to ensure, or, you know, to give you some confidence, um, you know, so that you can project yourself to the uh, interviewer. Or maybe you get some more confident when you're talking to your customer or you know, uh, any, any other clients, right? So that's very important. And take this feedback. And uh, based on the mm -hmm. conversation, what we have is, uh, you know mm -hmm. things, how to do it, but you are failing to explain. Okay, you know the okay. concept, but you're not putting them in the right way. Okay, mm -hmm. just focus on them, and uh, I'm sure you will be able to um, crack any interview or maybe if there is a project that is coming in your way in your current organizations, you will be able to handle them for sure. Okay, so okay. probably in the upcoming sessions, uh, we will focus more on the networking components. All right, mm -hmm. then um, then we will talk about a little bit of architecture side. Uh, let's say if one of the customer, <clears throat> um, you want to deploy application in the cloud. So how do you start the process? Do you, mm -hmm. how do you suggest, what kind of VM you suggest, what kind of location you suggest, what location? So all those things, right? How do you design an application or an Azure cloud infrastructure for that customer? So we'll do in upcoming uh, videos, all right? So for now, I think uh, it's a good start. Uh, you you have some good understanding, but you you need to put a little more efforts on uh, you know projecting yourself. Okay. Okay, Kamal. Yeah. Thank you for. Thank you so that. much, uh, Praveen, for your time and um, thanks for your time and uh, let's connect. Okay. Yes, sir. Bye. Thank you, Kamal. Yes. Bye.